Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering retinal detachment. Now, before we even get started, you need to understand that retinal detachment is an ocular medical emergency. Before we get started, guys, please, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel. How? by liking this video, subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website and now you can book an NCLEX review on my website. Right now, I have bookings for the NGN where I go over the types of questions you should um, expect to see, the format, how to answer those types of questions, and the most important content you better know before going to take that exam. So make sure you go check out my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Check that out. And don't forget, almost daily, you guys can find me covering a variety of nursing topics on my Instagram, my Facebook, and my TikTok. All right, guys, so let's get started. Um, as you see, it says retinal detachment. This is an ocular medical emergency. So what this says, guys, look at what it says. It says separation of the sensory retina and the underlying pigment epithelium with fluid accumulation between the two layers. So in this patient, in the patient that has no other risk factors, who has retinal detachment in one eye? Look at what it says. Let me turn the page. It says that the risk of detachment in the second eye is as high as 25%. That is a very high number that they can end up getting um, retinal detachment in the second eye. Almost all patients with untreated retinal detachment, they're going to lose that eye. They will go blind, okay? So it's very important as a nurse that you can recognize these clinical manifestations. What are the signs and symptoms of retinal detachment? Photopsia, the light flashes, floaters, having um, when you're looking and you're seeing a cobweb or a cobweb or hairnet appearance, ring around the visual field. Look at what it says. Once the retina has detached, the patient prescribes uh, describes a painless loss of peripheral or central vision, and that's a key. That's why I underlined that word painless. That is a clue to let you know this is most likely retinal detachment that we're dealing with. They lose uh, peripheral or central vision, but it's painless. Painless loss of peripheral central vision, and look at what I underlined and put a star next to. It's like a curtain coming across the field of vision. If they describe they feel like a curtain just closed across their field of vision, you better be thinking retinal detachment. Visual acuity, so how well they see. Visual acuity measurements should be the first diagnostic procedure of any complaint of visual loss. And uh, what do we use for a visual acuity? Remember the Snellen chart? Yeah, okay, so that's what they're talking about. The retinal detachment can be directly visualized using direct and indirect ophthal... No, I can't speak. Ophthalmos... You guys see that word right here. I can't pronounce it. Ophthalmoscopy, right here, you see it. This is um, the test they use. That or slit lamp microscopy in conjunction with special lens to view the periphery of the retina. Again, remember what happens is they can lose their central or peripheral vision, but again, it is painless. Let's take a look at the care and what we'd expect for see, to see for this type of patient, okay, for retinal detachment. Um, I underlined and put a star next to the ones that you're most likely to see as a test question if you're, you know, this is what you're studying for school. So let's look at the diagnostic test. Visual acuity measurement. Again, what are we doing? Let the Snellen uh, chart. Op ophthalmoscopy, that's the direct and indirect visualization. Slit, slit lamp microscopy. Management. Remember, guys, this is a what? Ocular medical emergency. So pre-op, Patient's going to get uh, uh, mydriatic medication, cycloplegic agents. If you don't know what those are, I did a whole video on those in my pharmacology playlist. Be sure to go back and check that out. As far as surgery, what is the type of surgery you expect to be pro uh, provided for a patient with retinal detachment? It's going to be the scleral buckling. Professor D, do I need to know that? Absolutely. Post-op. What do you expect? Patient's going to be on antibiotics, topical, of course. They may get some topical and, um, corticosteroids for the inflammation, analgesics for the pain, mydriatics. Remember that D, D, D in mydriatics for what? Dilation, right? Pupillary dilation. Uh, positioning and activity as prescribed by the surgeon. So depending on that patient's uh, uh, condition, they'll give those orders. 
interdisciplinary care. Look what it says up there. For in, under inter, interprofessional care, giving precise information about the warning signs and the symptoms of impending detachment and instructing the patient to seek immediate evaluation if any of those signs are recognized. All right, what signs are we talking about? All those signs over here that you saw me underline and put a star next to, those are the ones that you most likely are going to see on your test, okay? So make sure you commit that to memory. Again, the type of procedure we expect that patient to have is going to be that scleral buckling. Also, I, I mentioned this in another video, guys, but um, I know the way that I'm doing the video is kind of different. And for that, the reason for that, years and years of me reading out the book, but me having my head down, it's caused me to have some serious complications in my neck and I just can't do it anymore. So I had to find another way. So I don't, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but this is what I have to do just to keep my head up. So I'm not looking down when I'm reading anymore. All right, so scleral buckling is the procedure that we expect. Let's talk about some post-operative care. Post-op considerations. So the patient may need multiple topical medical medications, including antibiotics. Let me stop right there for a second. Remember, guys, again, it doesn't matter what type of surgery a patient has. We're always going to be concerned with these three things. We're always going to be concerned about them getting a DVT or pulmonary embolism. We're going to be concerned about them bleeding out. And we're going to be concerned about infection. So we're going to give them topical antibiotic. They're going to get anti-inflammatory agents, such as what? Those steroids we were talking about. And dilating agents. Remember, mydriatic. That D in mydriatic stands for dilating. That's important to remember because you also have meiotic medications, and I don't want you to confuse the two. In most cases, retinal detachment is an urgent situation and the patient is suddenly confronted with the need for surgery. And it's going to be two choices. They get surgery or they lose the eye. When it comes to retinal detachment, that's what it comes down to. You get this treatment or you go blind in this eye. When the patient experiences post-operative pain, administer prescribed pain medications as order, and you're going to teach the patient to take the medication as necessary after discharge. Let's keep going. A little bit lower. Look what it says down here. Um, I highlighted table 21.5 but we already went over that 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 was you know the nursing interventions and teaching and things like that but look what it says next to it because the patient is at increased risk for retinal detachment and uh in the other eye remember their risk is up to 25 percent of getting it in the other eye so because their risk is so high you're going to teach the patient the signs and symptoms of retinal detachment also let's look on this side Oh, I feel like the light turned off. Lastly, it says you're going to use proper uh, protective eyewear. You're going to teach them to wear proper protective eyewear to help avoid uh, ocular damage related to the um, to the trauma. And that's it for macular degeneration. I macular degeneration. Um, retinal retinal detachment. That's it for retinal detachment. This was a very short video, but it was to the point. Everything you see that I either highlighted or I put a star next to, that is what you're most likely to see on your exam. So if you're studying um, uh, sensory uh, disorders, retinal detachment, trust me, I've been doing this a long time because these same, the same things that you see I highlighted and I underlined, those are the same concepts that show on show up on NCLEX if they're asking about this type of disorder. So just make sure that you know it. I'm not going to lead you wrong. So that's it for retinal detachment, guys. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section. Let me know what you'd like me to cover next. Don't forget, I have audio lessons and also NCLEX review that you can book on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And you guys can find me on other, other social media platforms such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.